Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. Sunday directly after the morning worship service, and I believe we're in the community room. 
This meeting will be held in person only. So, uh, so come on, join the conversation. Are there any other announcements that I might have missed? The UCW potluck is open to the entire congregation, um, not just the ladies, so please come <laughs> and have a good meal for sure. So um, if there's nothing else that I might have missed, I also encourage you to check the bulletin for any other upcoming events. Oh. <laughs> upcoming events and to check your inbox for the latest news bites for any updates on what's happening here at North Lane. In that case then, please join me now for our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Parent God, you've blessed us with Jesus' life to teach us the lessons we need to grow. We reach for the wisdom. Guiding God, you set us the goal of manifesting your loving will of being your hands and feet in this world. We watch, we watch for direction. Powerful God, you offer us the insight and strength of the Holy Spirit. We, we welcome inspiration. Our souls are uplifted by these gifts as we journey toward the ultimate ascension. We are we walking, walking home. home. Please join us now for our next, our first hymn, The Risen Christ, Voices United, 168.
Before I begin, I'd like to say I've looked at Cheryl's bio, and it's a reminder that um, we have a relationship with Glebe Road as well, and that perhaps as God led you to Glebe, we were led to Glebe and Glebe to us last year when we decided to support their sponsorship, refugee sponsorship of an Afghan family in hiding and uh, in Pakistan. And we uh, stepped up at Northley and did a tremendous fundraising and uh, have recently confirmed that with Clean Road that we dedicate $30,000 here for that sponsorship that we are praying for. And again, today we might just hold that family in our prayers as they every day are at risk of deportation and persecution. Let us pray for illumination now. Holy Spirit, stir us from your word with your word as we listen for inspiration in your sacred story. Amen. The first reading today is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. The second reading is John 15, 9 to 16. These words from Jesus. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. We sometimes hear people say that you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. In my life, friends have become my family. Having no siblings, I feel I was truly guided from my youth to form friendships in which I could have a bond as close as what I imagined sibling bonds to be. Whether it was the Holy Spirit guiding me or whether it was my innate need to belong, and maybe those two are one and the same, it's a blessing that has permeated my life. Some years ago, a friend gave me this, this silver-toned bracelet, and it has 18 links, well, I made it to 18 links, bearing the image on each link in gold of, well, actually the first one that I got was a dog. I'm a dog fanatic. I adore dogs. I will speak to dogs far more frequently than I speak to people, I'm afraid. <laughs> and I always know the names of the dogs in the street and rarely recall the names of the human beings. Just, just the way it is. So my, my friend knew that the dog charm to start it with would be a great example of what I hold close to my heart. And the, and the rest of the links were blank to be replaced by other links which to the giver would represent a significant aspect either of me or of our friendship. Then a few years after I got the bracelet, 
I asked friends who normally give me birthday presents each to give me a link for that brace that I wanted to have the feeling of friendship around me, to have each one of them represented so close to me. The link that my best friend, Deb, she just lives down the street, Deb and her husband gave me is of two house keys crossing over each other because we always have keys to each other's homes. And the link another close couple gave was four hearts overlapping to represent the friendship between them and me and my husband, Bill. Another was of comedy tragedy masks because that particular friend and I met doing theater. And so it went. Then the next year, I asked Bill for my birthday to buy me links that were selected by me to represent friends not already on my bracelet, as well as groups of people who mean so much to me. A group of seven girlfriends with whom I celebrate birthdays each year with beautiful meals prepared by the cooks amongst us. I don't number amongst them. It's represented by a casserole dish filled with hearts. My church family is represented appropriately by a gold cross. So now my wrist is encircled with all the people whose presence in my life has been one of God's greatest blessings to me. Our reading from Ecclesiastes today says, But woe to him who is alone when he fit falls and has not another to lift him up. This bracelet has provided me with comfort in the darkest of times, reminding me that I am not alone but surrounded by love, and not just love itself, but love in action. When my bill passed away, I was not just lifted up by friends, but I was carried in meaningful, thoughtful, practical ways in the journey that has followed. The Bible abounds with stories of friendships. In the book of Ruth, Ruth's devotion to Naomi is way beyond that of daughter-in-law obligation. She expands that relationship into friendship when she says, where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. Then in the book of, of Samuel, Jonathan and David form a friendship that was outside the norm based on their different societal standing. Jonathan puts friendship over heartless standards, and we are told in Samuel 18, verse 1, that, this is a lovely quote, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And who, who can forget the steadfastness of Job's friends? We hear in Job, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that had come upon him, they came, each from their own place, to show him sympathy and to comfort him. And when they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads toward heaven. And they sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. These friends not only sympathize with Job, they empathize. They themselves feel his pain because they love him. They suffer for and with him. And they were so in tune with Job as to know that words would be weak against that kind of pain. They just sat with him in solidarity. As people on a faith journey, we contemplate the nature of, indeed, the source of love. Love that surpasses self-interest and self-need. Love that we call friendship. We find that nature and that source exemplified in Jesus. Source made from God and transmitted 
by the Holy Spirit. In a great article I read by Gail O'Day entitled, I Have Called You Friends, she says this, Jesus gave everything to his friends, his knowledge of God and his own life. Jesus is our model for friendship because he loved without limits. And he makes it possible for us to live a life of friendship because we have been transformed by everything he shared with us. Jesus directed us in words and by example. In John 10, Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd and says, I lay down my life for the sheep. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. The sheep, of course, are us. O'Day refers to this as the ultimate act of friendship. It's a standard far too high for most of us mere mortals, although there are many stories of people sacrificing their own lives for others. Thankfully, though, most of us will never be in a position where this ultimate act of friendship is asked of us. But to whatever degree we are given the opportunity, we all have access to that same source of love that inspires all generous movements of the heart. And in John 13, Jesus inverts the norm of servants washing the feet of hosts or masters by washing the feet of his disciples. O'Day says this, the foot washing is a sacrament of friendship. Jesus offers himself completely to his disciples in order to give a tangible shape to love. In the foot washing, Jesus and the disciples move from being servants and master to being friends. Friendship is giving tangible shape to love. It's the food that arrives unsolicited when grief is denying appetite. These are meals that nourish and sustain the body and gestures that nourish and sustain the soul. It's the thinking of you card that arrives just at the right time. It's the steadying hand on your shoulder when you are feeling weak. The hug, the hug that extends long enough for you to know it's not perfunctory. It means something. It says something. It is eyes locked in supportive embrace. Proverbs 29, chapter 9 says, The sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Intimate friends are able to speak truths that are uncomfortable to hear and to listen to them as well. When sweeping things under the carpet would be far, far easier, but bringing them into the light is the more generous act. Real friends gather courage to speak out, both for the benefit of the friend and of the friendship. Jesus dying on the cross, entrusted the care of his mother to his beloved friend. John 19, verses 26 and 27 read, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This was a no-questions-asked exchange. Clearly, Jesus knew he could trust this disciple as a friend. They shared both trust and loyalty. Anais Nin said, Each friend represents a world in us. A world not born until they arrive, and it is only by this meeting that a new world is born. We choose to be friends with people to whom we are drawn by the heart, by their personalities, by their perspectives, and we follow that heart guide to friendship. All friendships are of a personal nature, 
because they spring from our hearts. But not all friendships are on a personal level. We extend friendship on a broader scale to those who we don't know them personally. We extend friendship to the less advantaged, to those who experience discrimination, to those who are victims of cruelty or injustice. We can offer that friendship as individuals and also as a group. As a church, North Lee has extended tangible friendship through Karen's Cupboard, United Church Mission and Service, and certainly in this joining with Glebe to do the refugee family help. It's all friendship extended on various levels. And then beyond the personal and then the group level, we extend the hand of friendship nation to nation, manifesting on a larger scale the generosity which Jesus exemplified and to which he guided us. We are spirit beings on a human journey. These bodies we inhabit are fueled by blood pumped by the heart, and our souls are fueled by love imbued in us by the source of all love. It's, it's that urge to, the urge to comfort, the urge to help, that, that swell of the heart that happens when we laugh or cry with a friend, when we reap pleasure in the very fact that this special person exists. It's that feeling that inspires us to be with them, to accept as a blessing in our lives, and that creates in us to be a blessing in their lives. Our physical hearts are perpetually in motion, sustaining our bodily lives, and equally so, our soul's love is not stagnant. It moves in and through us, each of us giving, each of us receiving. Love is the catalyst of friendship. Friendship is love in action. And in that we can give love and receive love, but not touch love, and in that it is not part of our physical life, we can identify love as spiritual life. That spirit energy of love is born of God. God is love. Love is God. Whether one circle is large or small, the, the ties that bind us together are so precious. Written on a dear friend's gravestone is his response to the question asked, what was his philosophy of life? It's the people, it says. It's the people. Supporting that wise declaration is this poem that my mom taught me as a child, and I kept it with me always, and turned out to be prophetic. It is my joy in life to find at every turning of the road the strong arm of a comrade kind to help me onward with my load. And when there is no joy in life, and love alone can make amends, I have but one prayer while I live. God, make me worthy of my friends. Albert Schweitzer said, at times our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. Inspired by Schweitzer, we might add to the beautiful notion in the book Anne of Green Gables of kindred spirits, we might add the notion of kindled spirits. The Holy Spirit works through others and within us to kindle the love that is already there as part of our spirit being. May the flame of love burn strong within each one of us that we can rekindle the spirits of others in true and faithful friendship. Amen. Amen.
please join me in prayer. Dear God, there is not one of us here without a hope in our mind and a prayer in our heart for ourselves and for those we love. We seek the constancy of faith to know that you are with us on each path we take. We need to remember when the path is rough that we are not alone. We need to remember to lean on you. Let us be comforted in the church family that we are and are becoming, knowing that in a very special way we are there for each other and that you have arranged that. Remind us that each of us has something to contribute to the whole. Heal our wounds, both personal and communal, both spiritual and physical. We pray with words expressing our longing for the well-being of ourselves and those we know are suffering. And we pray with yearnings of the heart for which words are too weak. We take a moment now for silent prayers perhaps too delicate to utter. God, may our prayers be answered with the gentle force of your will and the vastness of your love. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us away from temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is, Draw the Circle Wide. More voices, one, four, five.
Committee and the Commissioning. Let us all, as friends in God, take leave of each other in love. Let us extend into the world the bonds we form in faith. May we be strengthened in God's love to hold our fellows up in friendship. May we be guided by Jesus' example and steadied by the Holy Spirit. And may we shine God's blessing on all we meet. The source of all goodness is love. Love is God. God is eternal. Eternity is unfathomable. May God's unfathomable love pervade the next days of our lives until and beyond we meet again. Amen. Amen. Thank you.